Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to take the opportunity to first introduce you to one of my family members. This is my grandmother, D'Agostino. Grazia was her name, Grace in English, and believe it or not, I never met her. My grandmother passed away before I was born, so you may ask yourself this morning, why is it that I'm talking about my grandmother, D'Agostino? Well, about five years ago, I was getting my hair cut in the Valsburg area of Newark when I was still in the seminary at Seton Hall, and you're not allowed to laugh, I still get my hair cut. <laughs> and they still charge me full price. <laughs> you know, this barber must have been about 85 years old, and we got to talking, and he asked me where my family was from in Italy. And I told him, and then he asked me where they settled when they came to the United States. So I told him my mother's family lived on North 11th Street, and my father lived on 14th Avenue in Newark. The barber then began to tell me that his family was from 14th Avenue, and he asked me my last name, and of course I told him it was D'Agostino. And then he stopped, dead in his tracks, and he became very emotional. He asked me if my grandmother's name was Grace or Grazia, and I said yes. And I could not for the life of me think what this man was about to tell me. He then became teary-eyed. He then asked me if my grandmother owned a dry goods store, and I said yes. For those of you who don't know what a dry goods store is, she would sell blankets and pillows for a baby's nursery. And then he told me the story. When he and his wife were expecting their first child, he went to my grandmother's store. They picked out the things that they needed for the crib, but they didn't have enough money. My grandmother looked at this young couple and told them not to pay her anything. They could pay her when they were able to. They needed to go home with the things now and prepare themselves for this child that they were about to have. The barber had tears running down his cheeks as he told me this story. And then he showed me the picture of his son, all grown up now, the one who he and his wife were expecting when they visited my grandmother's store so many years ago. And I, when I recall this story in preparing for Mass this weekend, I couldn't help but to think about what Advent is. You know, we know it's the weeks that are immediately before Christmas, but what exactly is Advent? It's to be prepared for the coming of the Lord, just like that barber who needed to be prepared for the coming of his firstborn child. You and I need to be ready to be vigilant, as the gospel tells us, for the coming of the Lord on Christmas Day. You know, Advent is here, and Christmas is going to come whether we're ready or not. So taking the example of my grandmother, lovely Grazia, there's no time to wait. We have to act now. And the gospel over the next few weeks will give us some clues. We'll see miracles, and we will see wonders. We'll see a wild man in the desert wearing the hair of a camel, eating locusts and honey. We'll witness an angel telling a virgin that she will give birth to the Son of God. We'll encounter heavenly hosts singing glory to God when the child is born. We'll see wise men from afar bringing precious gifts. We'll look for a star. Light will pierce the darkness and history will be made. Be vigilant, Jesus says. What you're about to see is unbelievable. Yet, you and I believe. As the angel declared to a young girl in Galilee, nothing is impossible with God. We believe, we hope, we wait, and we watch. But you see, we don't wait idly while things around us happen. This is the great call of Advent, our great purpose during these weeks, when we cry out to God, pleading with him to come to us while we wait. We stay alert in order to make possible something wonderful, something beautiful, something extraordinary that can and will happen to us and through us and for us 
if we allow it. And that something is really not just a thing at all. It's our living God in the person of Jesus who wants to break into our world. That is to break into our hearts and our minds and our lives. Our living God who wants nothing more than to make a dwelling not simply in a manger in the corner of a small town. This God, this Jesus, wants to make a home in you and me. And you know, we have two beautiful examples of our Blessed Mother and Saint Joseph, who emptied themselves to receive Jesus. We think of Mary's yes, how she must have felt when the angel Gabriel appeared to her, and after he left, she was left alone. And she must continue along the path that leads through many dark moments, from Joseph's dismay at her pregnancy to the moment when Jesus is tortured and beaten and bruised right up to the night of the cross. And during those difficult moments, she would return to that very moment. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. During our difficult times, we need to always return to the fact that Christ finds favor with each of us. We should not be afraid to return to that place time and time again during the season of Advent and each day of our lives. And then we have a beautiful example in St. Joseph. Last week, Father Stephen gave such a great homily, and he told the joke about St. Joseph being a carpenter and building the confessionals. But I'd like to talk about St. Joseph in the context of Advent. Joseph was a just man, but he was confused. How could Mary be with a child when they had no relations? And many don't know this, but an angel actually appeared to St. Joseph as well and told him three things. Things that we can think about today as we embark upon our Advent journey together. First, the divine messenger granted him the gift of peace. Do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. The coming of the Lord is always a gift of peace to those who love and serve him. So for Advent, think about this. God wants to grant us the gift of peace. Peace associated with focusing on him in anticipation of Christmas, but also realizing that he is with us at every stage and in every moment of our lives. Second, the angel told Joseph there was a divine plan in place. Mary will give birth to Jesus, which means Yahweh saves, who will save his people from sin. For Advent, think about this. God has a plan for each one of our lives. He is in control. We simply need to be prepared to receive him. Finally, the angel provided the prophetic background to this stunning event. The angel proclaimed, the virgin will receive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. So for Advent, think about this. In the hustle and bustle of the season, let us always stay centered on the true meaning of Christmas and prepare the way for the Lord. And then we learn three lessons from St. Joseph that help to prepare us for this Advent season. Joseph th thought first and foremost about Mary and her well-being. He acted justly without concern for himself, even though he had every right to be upset. For Advent, we should focus on doing for others and help them in their need. Secondly, he placed his trust and hope in God's promise. Although we hear, never hear any words from St. Joseph, we're always told of his actions. His actions show us his heart. For Advent, trust in God's promise for each of us and be examples to others. Finally, St. Joseph embraced the daunting task of being the foster father to the Son of God. Why, we ask? Because he trusted in God despite the strangeness of the situation. He let God guide him. For Advent, life provides you and me with situations and struggles that sometimes we cannot comprehend. We need to trust in God despite the strangeness and the pain 
and the struggle of our situations in life. He walks with us. He never leaves us alone to deal with these situations. And so let's not let this Advent go by without anything different happening. Let's not sleep our way through it or get distracted by everything else that goes along with this holy season. Rather, let's be prepared. Something might just happen. Something that can change each of us in a profound and in a lasting way. And when that happens, when, when we let God in, who knows what might result from such a transformation. A little more kindness, a little more understanding, a little more compassion, a little more forgiveness, a little more generosity, and maybe even a little more love. One person, one heart at a time. So on this first Sunday of Advent, I invite you to close your eyes for a moment as we pray together. Dear Jesus, I long for your coming. The promise of new light is there for us if we believe. Protect us in these days ahead and let us experience the light of your presence in our lives to the joy we so long to find in you. Lift us up and give us the promise of salvation and the light and saving grace of your love. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And just one final thought before I'm done. You know, I got to spend some time with these 14 men and women who are going through our R RCIA process, and I will tell you I'm so honored to take this journey with them. I see the Lord working in their lives and transforming them, and I, work, I, wa I, I wait with anticipation at the day that they all welcomed into the Catholic Church during our Easter season. So now I ask them all to stand, and we have a special gift for each of them. And I invite Father Stephen, Father Carlos, Deacon Steve to help me pass out a Bible and the, and the Catechism of the Catholic Church to help them in their journeys.